we've had a loss of most of Libya's oil exports, violence in Iraq, unrest elsewhere. Um, it points one way. What are you saying on the price now? Well, there's actually a couple of things in play. I think, yes, certainly the Middle East is on the supply side a worry. Uh, we've got, as you say, disruptions in Libya, question marks over Iraq, and of course the situation with Iran in the background in the wider context of the Arab uh, political uh, Arab Spring. Uh, but also, on the other side, we've got fairly weak demand growth. Uh, we've got supply coming through from the United States in quite a large quantity. Uh, and we've got the eventual prospect of the U.S. tapering, where they withdraw support from the economy. So they're sort of balancing each other out at the moment, uh, and we're seeing prices going sideways. I think what's going to probably give first is that we're going to start to see uh, supply beginning to overtake demand, even with these issues in the Middle East, and we should start to see prices coming back down, but it, right. may, be, it may be a few months yet before right. we get there. We're, we're at 109 now. Where will we be at the end of the year? Uh, well, we think we'll probably be closer to 100 than 110, but there's a lot of uncertainty in the Middle East, and it's going to take a while to, for this sort of thing to work through. I think next year we're a lot more confident about the fact that prices are going to retreat a little bit because of the Fed withdrawing support, and because demand growth just isn't going to be quite as strong as it has been in the past. Um, you, we, you talk about the end of tapering and, and the extension after extension, uh, which helps risk assets, of course. What is, is the, what, the mentality in the market, uh, is, is this something that's been being more and more priced in now, would you say? I, well, to a certain extent, yes. I think I think everyone was a little bit wrong-footed when the Fed uh, came in out and announced that they weren't going to taper until essentially the end of this year and into next year, uh, sometime in the summer, just a couple of months ago. But apart from that, yeah, I think people are, of course, waiting and expecting it. The irony being, the worse the economic data is from the U.S., or at least the more mixed it is, uh, the more the prospect of quantitative easing being pushed out goes ahead. And so you actually get an increase in oil prices. So you get weak demand, you get weak air economic growth and you get an increase in, in oil prices. a little bit counterintuitive at the moment, um, but I think that eventually we will start to see the Fed withdrawing that support. Mm -hmm. They have to. And I think the market's priced in some of it, but we're still sort of in that uncertainty period about exactly when. So when we start to get a firm commitment on when that starts to happen, I think you will see a market impact. I, I know you don't look at the corporates, but, but I, I guess your forecasts, the price to come off before the end of the year and then over the next two years even more. I mean, not great for big oil, right? No, not ideal, but uh, don't forget that for big oil, a lot of their revenue now is coming from natural gas and not just oil. Uh, and a lot of it is, is related to the refining industry as well. So it's not a pure play, but yeah, I mean, I think obviously they prefer to see prices higher than lower. Um, but there are opportunities for them out there in, in areas other than, uh, than the pure uh, oil plays, which are becoming more and more difficult to get access to.